We examine the rise of the cities and the rising standard of living in the industrial age. With all of the changes in the industrial age, especially with goods becoming cheaper and more available, mass production allowed all classes to experience a new leisure time to go to sporting events, parks, theaters, saloons, circuses, and also visit new amusement parks like Coney Island in New York City. The standard of living increased for many people in the industrialized world. The population of Europe had doubled in a century due to advancements in medicine and nutrition. Patent medicines aside, doctors like Pasteur and Koch began to link disease to bacteria and germs. They helped push treatment options with prevention and vaccinations, dropping the rate of some deadly diseases like tuberculosis. Regular bathing, public health programs, and sanitized hospital care increased the lifespan of the industrialized world. Another massive change was the growth of the megacity. Populations of cities grew as agricultural workers were displaced on mechanized farms and immigrants flooded to the cities looking for work. Combined with the population boom, class patterns began to develop in the neighborhoods. Immigrants and workers crowded into the inner city slums and tenements near the factory jobs, while wealthier and middle class people tended to move to tree-lined single-family homes on the outskirts and then commuted into the city for shopping and jobs. Life for the urban poor and working class tended to consist of families living on limited wages in a one-room tenement. Inner city dwellers dealt with disease, lack of sanitation, fire and crime. Lower class women were expected to work despite the cult of domesticity, tending to work in factories or as servants for the upper classes. Immigrants often clustered in groups in the same neighborhoods to preserve their language, food, music and traditions that then diffused into the rest of the city culture. City planning really took off after the 1848 revolutions when Napoleon III and Baron Haussmann spent 1850-70 to 70 redesigning Paris. They tore down the medieval streets, the houses, and the slums, and they built large avenues and cultural centers like the opera. They put in parks and the new sewer system. City planners throughout the industrial world tried to make a more positive and sanitary experience in the city with gas lighting, row housing, police and fire departments, and cleaner water sources. In the new grid patterned cities like London, New York, and Madrid, it became easier to break up congestion, organize commerce, police crime, and prevent urban sprawl. Cities offered opportunities unmatched in the rural areas. Weekend and evenings off for workers allowed all classes to participate in mass leisure. Opera houses, Nickelodeons, theaters, museums, libraries, sporting events, free public parks, zoos, circuses, amusement parks, restaurants, cafes, saloons, dance halls, and vaudeville. The advent of electricity in the cities provided a 24-hour playground. There was no end to the opportunities as cities offered parades, festivals, and markets. Transportation problems were solved through electric trolleys and subways that limited horse cart congestion in the streets. Steel was used in the new skyscrapers, but also to give cities identifiable monuments like the Statue of Liberty in Brooklyn Bridge in New York and the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The industrial city also gave birth to sensationalism in the newspapers and dime novels. Shocking stories filled the page about serial killers like Jack the Ripper and H.H. H. Holmes. Internationally, the sports and games of the city led to the birth of the modern Olympics.